last week was uh, someone who had, had uh, other term tests. Um, so before we start, thanks to all of you who have participated in the three to one survey. I reviewed all your comments and um, I'm so happy and very proud of you. Trust me, I'm very, very proud of you. Uh, because I could see how most of you had, especially when uh, from the question when you had to list something that was negative or you will do differently. Um, I was I was happy to hear to to see this. And uh, and I think it was a very good exercise for you. So clap clap for all of you for the I think there was, there was about fifty percent of the class who participated in the survey. So I, I feel all that. And I put them, exported them on an Excel file, I made a huge table, and I will try to reply, or to address your questions one by one, hopefully. So I will put this up. some concerns and questions on the discussion board. So it's like kind of a to-do list for me and even for you, and then I will try to answer uh, some of them. Uh, so uh, I was happy to see this, and uh, I was happy to see that so many of you had suggestions, um, which I, I really appreciate. And as I said, I will try to address uh, these questions. And as promised, the one who participated to the 3 to 1 survey will get 0 0.5 point bonus for in the term test. So I said it last week in the, t in the exam, in the class, and it was written, uh, if you go to the survey, there was uh, when we, uh, the, the instruction were break, and it was written and it was in the line. So people who went there and they took the time to go and read, it was there. And then to kind of encourage you, I had it, I posted an announcement last week to say the due date is Friday. So, it's okay, so it, it's a bonus. So for people who kept, couldn't do it for X, Y reason, I'm okay, I'm fine with it. And thanks for all of you who participated to the another survey or vote to select if yes or no will have this week to have um, an in-person, in-class lecture or a recorded. Most of you, so I can see it here, so 50, 50 students voted, and there was 70 percent of you who choose the in-class lecture than the tutorial, which we will be doing today, and 30 percent choose recorded lectures. Uh, the recorder, the lectures are being recorded, and I will try to record later. So then, the 30 percent, I guess, these 30 percent, most of them are not here today. But it's okay. I will uh, try to record at least part of it. So today we will have the lecture of Libet. We will have we'll continue our lecture on carbohydrates. You remember we had five or six slides from the from the the lecture on carbohydrates before the exam. I'm going to talk about. Uh, bubble tea, beans, uh, tapioca, and pectins for the making job. We we'll do this, and then last part, we'll have fun. I hope we'll have fun today. We will be talking about emulsifiers. So I know many of you ask me about how to make, how do I emulsify an emulsifier? How do we know that it's an oil and water, or it's water and oil and water? So we'll see it together. I didn't post the slides, so they didn't take purpose. So then we together can participate, and then we'll post the slides later. It's not, there were about four or five slides, that's it. Okay. Uh, so about, I didn't have any, I didn't have any, um, uh, any housekeeping slide, because if you know, the slides were posted last week, so 
there was no point anyway if you, you did have had the extra slide anyway. So, uh, the term test uh, was really graded. Uh, uh, there is uh, an issue in importing the, the, the grades on workers, so it's done. Uh, so uh, hopefully I can make it this afternoon or later or tomorrow morning so that you have your grades. For people who want to see the copies, you email me, you have, you have two weeks to do it. You email me and if I set up a meeting, you have the right to see your grades and to see how you did and the terms. Obviously, the, you won't get back your copies, but you have the right to see them in my office. Okay, let's start with our lecture today. So last week we spoke about lipids. What are the lipids? How we identify lipids? The triglyceride? What are the properties? Today it will be a little bit more application and uh, an overview about how these all, what are these all and lipids that are uh, or fats that are used in the food or the food industry and how uh, they are processed. So, as we all know, there are three types of, of oils and fats, oil mainly, um, that are available in in the nature anyway and commercially available and commercially uh, important in the food industry. So we have the saturated plant oils, we have the monounsaturated, so there is one double bond or one monounsaturated, and we have the polyunsaturated, and then these are omega, omega 6, omega 3, etc. where we have multiple double bond in the chain, and this is what why we call them. Polyunsaturated. So if we start with monounsaturated or saturated, saturated oil, the most common is the coconut oil. So the oil coming from the coconut is the one that is inside the pulp, inside the white uh, uh, part of the coconut. So when you when you open it, and it contains coconut oil contains. 60% 60 60 of this oil is a copper oil, and 50% and of it is uh, uh, cont contains lauric acid, which is lauric, lauric fatty acid, which is a saturated fatty acid. If you remember last week, I said coconut oils, uh, opposite to other plants, or, or oils or, or, or plants uh, coming from vegetables, they have shorter fatty acids. So the, the length of their fatty acids is about 12 um, calories. And if you remember, this is why I said the saponification value was a little was closer to the saponification value of milk, which was had a uh, uh, shorter fat, length of fatty acid about from 8 to uh, 12 calories. So this is for your knowledge. Your then we have another important oil that is pine oil and it's pine kernel oil. So, pine oil and our kernel oil are coming from the same fruit, or the same, yeah, the same fruit. Or, uh, so it's coming from a plant that we collect, we collect, we collect this uh, specific fruit that is here drawn in the picture. And then in this, we have the pulp or the pulp that is the orange one and then the inside we have a kernel and both of them are sort of oils but they have different composition of oils so pine oils contains 47 percent of saturated fat and then these are six, 16 uh, calories and then they have about 55 percent of unsaturated you will say, oh, if I sum these and some, sometimes 47 and 30, 50, 50, sometimes you find here 52. So it's not exactly 100% because there are some traces of other fatty acids that can be contained. So don't be surprised if you don't see the sum of the different oils 
uh, is 100 percent. Then we have palm kernel oil that contains 86 percent of the saturated and 14 percent of unsaturated. So the main, the, or the majority of oils are saturated oils. So this is why palm oil and the palm kernel are considered as saturated plant oil. Then we have peanut. Peanut oil. Um, so they are coming from the uh, uh, Arashit, uh, uh, yes. uh, so these were originated uh, in South America a very long time ago and the peanuts can be used as a food because they are not only a good source of oil but also a good source of proteins. Saturated fat um, are about 20% and unsaturated fat here it's a lot it's a little bit different but they the, the, the are still considered as unsaturated fat um, and then the oleic acid one omega one the one double bond is about 50 percent so here if you sometimes as i said if you saw there is not exactly um, so 20 and 78 is uh, 90 so you saw, there are sometimes it's not the same. Then, going to olive oil. Olive oil is, yeah, it is a monosaturated oil. Um, it is known in, uh, uh, for its health benefits. It's one part of the Mediterranean diet. And then it is originated, the olive, olive in general, are originated from the Mediterranean sites, so either from, uh, South Europe or from North Africa. Um, the fruits in the Olea Europea, so this is the scientific designation or scientific name. Um, so the fruit is fleshy and it has a center stone. So this is a pig or pig on the car or a, a stone. So olives, when they are collected, they are green, dark green. Yeah. And then they continue ripening. We will see the ripening when we talk about plants in the collection of um, plants. And then they, they turn from green to red. So not, not, it's not exactly red. It's um, um, uh, how we how we call it? It's kind of uh, violet. It's a kind of a pink or dark pink, or a mixture of uh, red and blue. So this is not exactly red. And then it goes to black when it's completely, when it ripens uh, 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 snow. Um, oil, in the olive oil, in the olive, so here, when we collect the olive oil, we collect it from the pot here, that contains mainly uh, the olive oil. So oil is dispersed within the fruit in the drop. So oil is dispersed in something. So it is oil in water dispersion. So oil is dispersed in. So and the droplets of that are covered with a membrane. So the droplets of oil should be contained here and then they are enveloped in a specific, the specific membrane of the fruit. So how we make the olive oil? So to make a good quality of olive oil, the olives, once collected, they are immediately processed. So this avoids staying or, uh, for a longer time on air, uh, from, top, uh, from temperature on, on air. And this avoids the growth or the overgrowth of microorganisms that may lead to the spoilage of these fruits. Uh, so this is why it should be processed immediately. Um, and then, uh, so what, what what is done, so the leaves are removed and other, like any nutrients that are, they can be present. The olives are washed, so usually they are washed with um, warm uh, water. And then they are crunched. So with with everything, well, like as it is. So they are crunched, and this crunched will help making a paste. So it's like a kind of 
like a taste of a, I don't know, it's like kind of a peanut butter or something like this. It's so here, at this step, we don't have, it's just crunch it to liberate these droplets of oil. And then, what we need, we need to extract these droplets of oil to remove them from the mixture. So this is what we do, what we call a malaxation. So a malaxation uh, is kind of a, a, an agitation or a mixture of the uh, a product to disturb the membranes, in this case the olive, uh, the olive, that surround the small molecule. So here, let's imagine we have the paste that is a has the fruits and it has the oil. And then we keep malaxing or keep uh, like uh, so it's kind of a physical processing, and this will have these droplets to get to, to be gathered or to be put together and this malaxation will break the oil, the oil in water emulsion and then the, this will help promoting because they are together so they promote the formation of larger droplets so they become larger and then they can be easily separated from the upper space and this is how it works. So processing um, is uh, oil is uh, very simple. So oil is then separated from the olive base. Uh, so the separation depending, so it's either uh, by uh, filtration, so these paste are filtered and so to, con to keep only the olive, the only oil. The oil, there is a pressure. This is kind of a traditional, so they're put into specific containers and uh, there are different layers of container and there is a manual pressure um, where it helps releasing the, uh, the oil. Or there is a sort of fugation. The pressure, it isn't traditional, it's easy to make, but in terms of amount of oil extracted is lower comparing to the filtration or to um, to uh, centrifugation or to both, because sometimes in industrial processing, both is done. Um, it is known that best college quality of oil has the lowest acidity, um, because so this is why it is um, uh, better to prevent the hydrolysis of uh, triglyceride. Uh, the oil should be processed easily. It shouldn't be staying at room temperature, should avoid uh, the uh, phosphooxidation, oxy we should avoid the oxidation. And this, if we prevent the hydrolysis, it will be preventing the formation of free fatty acid. If you remember last week we said free fatty acid are uh, um, a sign of food spoilage or food deterioration. Um, because there is a formation of free fatty acid, this is due to the oxidation exit. Uh, taste of olives, um, it's derived from flavor compounds that are present in the, in the olive before extraction, and uh, in addition to the, the, the triglyceride. So usually this triglyceride is more or less common in all, every oil, and then what changes or what what differentiate from one oil to another is the presence of these flavor compounds. And these flavor compounds depend on the region where the, um, the olives are cultural. It depends on the type and species of uh, trees, etc. And this is, these flavor compounds, these are because they have a specific profile and they change from one place to another, and this is how we are able to identify um, uh, or to predict or identify the region from where an olive oil is coming and or from, uh, for, for example, to identify the presence of adulteration. Because some olive oils, same for cheese, etc., they have, um, I don't think there is a translation, uh, if there is a, a French, it's, it's uh, appellation d'origine contrôlée, meaning it's controlled up 
name. So the name is control. When we say uh, olive oil, uh, I don't know, Italian, blah, blah, blah. So if it's coming from this region, it should be coming because it should be coming from this region and there should be a way you have to identify. The best way to identify is these flavor compounds. We'll try to see when we talk about the authentication. Authentication of, of uh, we'll, I will try to give you an example of authentication of body form because there are studies done on this. So there are different types of classes of body forms depending on the quality of them. We have the version, a version oil, and we have the refined oils. So we have the version, uh, can be extra version or an average or uh, we shouldn't call it ex ver uh, version, although sometimes it is available on the market. So how do we know? Um, it depends on the acidity. So version, extra version, and higher or like middle quality depends on the, first depends on the extraction, because this is the first extraction because so usually when, for example, uh, there is a formation of paste, there is a first extraction where we get, uh, so either the pressure or centrifugation. So the first layer or the first part or the first uh, oils that we are getting, these are the extra version or the version one. So they have high, good quality. Ideally, the extra version should be pressed at or the centrifugation or the pressure should be done at cold temperature or maximum at room temperature. So, the, so this is why we call it cold pressed. Cold pressure helps getting extra version and helps avoiding the auto oxidation and the formation or the hydrolysis of the triglyceride and the formation of free fatty acids. So, and then, so as I said, it depends on the acidity. So the extra version, the one that is the most expensive, is has, should have an acidity of less than 100 percent. And then, so these are the first. And then these are the ref refined olive oil. So, um, um, usually they have high, lower quality because, as I said, so there is a first pressure, and then. The leftover of one, they contain different debris, etc. The, the oil is extracted using solvents. So there is a first pressure or first extraction, and then there is another extraction where the oil is ex extracted using solvents, etc. And this is where the quality becomes lower because um, the oil, the, the way how it is processed, it removes. Com uh, flavor compound, etc. And this is so, this is why we have it uh, so, even in terms of quality, the, the, in price, this, these refined oils uh, have lower price. And then we have something that is a blend. Uh, it's a blend between refined and the uh, olive oil. It's important to know this because, so, as I said, it's uh, for the authentication, so we cannot. By law, we are not allowed to call, to name version oil or extra version oil a oil that was extracted with um, uh, specific uh, or uh, 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 specific fractionation. So this we are not allowed. By law, we cannot do it, and there are different ways, as I said, of quantification. If people who are interested, you can go and. Watch the YouTube link the link here. How it is how the olive oil is made. It's interesting. So then we move to polyunsaturated liquids. Polyunsaturated, we we have the first, our first one. Corn. Corn oil is a very uh, largely used uh, polyunsaturated oil. It contains so it's an omega-6 oil. It contains 60% of linoleic acid. So it's an uh, 18. Uh, uh, it's uh, 18, uh, 18 carbons. So 
The scientific name is Z-Mind, or we call it Mind or Core, uh, originated in, from Mexico and it was discovered about thousands of years ago. If you remember when we spoke about the starch, corn starch, etc., I said there is a kernel or the chart. This one, uh, it's about 4%, it contains 4% of corn. The germ is separated from the whole kernel for, for, the, for the extraction. Then the germ is pressed or solvent extraction to remove the oil. Um, corn oil, for example, compared to the olive oil, the oil is not extracted as easily as um, the, the cork oil. So this is why um, the, the most common, the industrial one, like big industrial extraction, they use solvent extraction rather than pressure because it's easy to handle and uh, uh, if, even in the, the amount uh, uh, of oil uh, uh, extracted is higher with the soil. Then we have sunflower seed oils. Um, so the seed of these sunflowers, they contain about 50% of oil. They originated in Mexico and South uh, the US. And then they were taken back to Europe, and they are, now they are spread all over the world. They are composed of 10% saturated and about 88% of unsaturated fat, so 50% uh, uh, is in 8 uh, C80. You see, if you sum 10 plus 88 is 98, so it, it's, it's correct, it's not, it's not a mistake here. Uh, this is why I said sometimes the sums are, are not exactly 100% uh, in terms of composition. Then we have soybean oil. Soybean is, is um, an important uh, product for like, uh, soybean in general because um, it is uh, so it's important for the food industry. Um, it has a major economic value because it's not only a source of oil, but fully a source of protein. Um, now, especially with uh, vegan or vegan food and or food substitute, etc., lots of uh, soybean products are used or soybean uh, yeah, extracts are used. So, uh, as we all know, so soybean uh, can be used to make for food, soy milk, and soy sauce. They are 40% of saturated and 85% of unsaturated. We'll talk about soybean um, when we talk about the proteins as well. How it's processed? Soybean processing is uh, more complex compared, for example, to the oil. So first, we see the harvested, they're dry. It's important to dry them. Do you know why you dry them? They were AW. Yes, yes, for the AW to remove the water and then because the water is a source of is a source of spoilage. So water is always no. Like water is can be a source, can be a problem sometimes. Then they are cleaning the hole, so the hole or the 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 uh, extra or outer um, um, membrane of the of the product or the soybean are removed. So these holes they may contain fibers, etc. So this we don't need. They are not rich in oil. And then the press. The pressure is done at cold. First pressure, cold. There is a cold pressure. Then pressure. Then. Same as for olive oil, there is a kind of a making a mixture, kind of it's called a cake here. It's called after press. So, so you have present, then you have a certain amount of oil that is extracted, but it needs to be refined. This cake is then also again kind of a process. So it's also again extracted with so first is an uh, is fresh and cold. Then the second, because there is a mixture of so many things, we need a solvent to extract it. A 
solvent has separating the oil from the cake and from the other mixture. And then we have a solvent, so our oil is mixed with the solvent. So we need to evaporate to remove the solvent. And then this is how we evaporate it. Then, so we evaporate, remove the solvent, then we obtain the curve, and it's refined and another, and again, it's same for here, excited, then uh, it's, the solvent is removed. Uh, and so until, and this is kind of a loop, until all the oil is extracted. So this is how we do it. So as I said, cold extraction, remove it. This one, for example, the curve, this one has cold, can be, can be um, uh, kept separated because it's kind of a version oil of uh, soybean. So it's a high quality. It can be kept separated and the process can be done. Uh, so for example, this part will be removed. It, go, it won't go back to the refining. So it depends on the purpose of the extraction. Is the purpose of extraction to, uh, for example, in this industrial, using it for selling oils, different oils, importing or ex exporting oil, or it's mainly done for the food processing. So it, it really depends. Uh, but this is an overall how it works. Then, uh, because the curl oil contains uh, different compounds that are not triglyceride uh, origin, uh, they need to go, as I said, processing. So these, what they, we call them, first we call it the gummy wash with water. So it's kind of removing the phospholipids uh, and uh, phospholipids using water. And then these phospholipids, this is what we call soil lysity, and these are the emulsifiers. So soybean, it doesn't only give us, soybean doesn't only give us a, or a good source of proteins, it's a source of oil, it's an unsaturated, fully unsaturated oil, and it, this is how we can make the emulsifier. Uh, emulsifier is secondary product, so we don't make, per, so in the industry we don't do it, we don't start the processing purposely to make the licity. Soil no, it's a product that is valorized later. So this is how first done. Then, because uh, we need to equilibrate the pH, so we need to use what we call an alkalis, or this is what we call the alkalis wash. Alkalis wash or alkali wash, it helps removing the free fatty acid. And they are all the other color of compounds and metallic um, uh, pro-oxidant. So all the metals that have the oxidation. This is kind of different layers of removing or of making, uh, refining or making the oil clear is better. Then we have what we call a steam distillation. Steam distillation, it helps removing the implacable and volatile flavor compound. So we apply the steam to uh, this non-refined oil. Uh, I was going to say olive oil. Uh, 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 soybean oil. And this steam, because of the high temperature, it helps removing uh, different flavor, different compounds that are volatile, so they volatilize or they become kind of a vapor, and this is how they are. And then later, because uh, this mixture, when we do it, when we add a solvent, so usually these are um, uh, there is the carbon or the carbon is added to the mixture to attract. Uh, uh, these activated carbon, they help attracting or removing the indesirable compounds. 
And then when we activate the uh, fiber track treatment, this will have the blanching. So it, because of fiber, uh, the carbon will have attracting all the color of compounds. It's kind of a chelator, but it's another way. It will be magnet, it's kind of a magnet. It, kind of, it absorbs or it catches all the color of compounds. And this is the way, this, is, this should be a later step, and this is the way how we decolor the, uh, the uh, oil. Uh, processing oil, soybean oil is uh, more uh, longer and more complex, but um, compared to other oils, but it helps, uh, it, uh, it may uh, help um, getting more byproducts that could be used for different, different uh, processing. Then we have canola oil. Canola oils, the, the, they are derived, this is the flower, this is, this is the flower, and this is the seed. And it's called, it's derived from the, what we call the rap seed. Uh, these are uh, uh, seed oils. Um, the rap seed as they are, they don't fit. They, are, they shouldn't be used for human consumption, consumption, sorry. Because they have high level of uric acid. Uric acid is anti-nutrient, so it has been shown to have uh, um, adverse to be associated to adverse effect uh, in a human. Uh, so the seeds, they are very rich in oil as they are. They cannot be used because they are higher in uric acid. And then what is done, there is a breeding, so they can't make a genetically modified plants, these plant seeds. These genetically modified, they produce a seed with less than 100% of uric acid. So going from 25 to 100%. This was done, was developed in um, I think it was developed in Alberta or in Guam. I don't remember. Either, either in Guam or in Alberta because this is where food science, uh, uh, food science um, the research. And this is why now this oil, instead of called drug seed oil, it's called canola oil. Canola oil stands for Canadian oil because it was developed in Canada. So this, the seeds are genetically modified. The canola oil seeds are genetically modified, and um, uh, they, have, they were made in Canada. So this is why we uh, why we call. Then we have flaxseed. Flaxseed is a very um, uh, Flaxseed is a, a particular product because um, it, is a, it has a lot of health benefits um, uh, against cancer, breast cancer, etc. And one of the particularities is um, the presence of uh, omega-3 fatty acid, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid in flaxseed. So, uh, its value, it's not only due to the presence of uh, fibers and uh, it's rich in fiber, but it's um, also due to the plant saturated fatty acid, or omega 2. Uh, it contains 90% of fatty acid, uh, and saturated fatty acid. And this is why, for example, you remember last week I said, uh, yeah, last week, is it, uh, so these polyunsaturated poly fatty acids are very sensitive to the oxygen and to the light, and we need to preserve them um, so then uh, we can uh, uh, to avoid the oxidation. So example of oxidation, the oil, those flaxseed oil can be oxidated in within one hour or one hour and a half. So uh, if you remember, we said this last week. Then we have vegetable fats. Cocoa butter, uh, it about contains 80% of triglycerol that are uh, uh, desaturated, so they have uh, 
these are all two double saturated or two saturated fatty acids. Um, it has uh, 18 omega 1 or 1 double bond at SN2 and main species or main polymorphic uh, version at uh, SN POST. Remember what is this? So POST or POST it's P at position 1, O at position 2, and ST at position 3. It's melting temperature at 37 degrees. So this is why cocoa butter is uh, used for example for chocolate and for other compounds and it melts when you consume. Then we move to fat, animal fat. Animal fat, the butter, most common. Um, animal fat, so it, ca it comes from milk anim animals. Uh, the fat in milk is an emulsion when we have the fat, the fat in milk is different from the, the fat that is present in, well, uh, in the pot. So first, the fat, the global fat in milk they are contained in water or in the milk or in fat in, in uh, protein coat. So when we have milk, so we have fat globule, we have casein, we have water, we have other proteins of milk, the these proteins are, are water soluble. So we have uh, fat in water or in water soluble compound. So this is remember this is how we how we recognize the type of emulsion. And then this fat because it's this wrapped in a, a container in in in, in uh, milk it has to be converted from oil in water to water in oil because the butter is water little bit of water that is this in a big amount of fat. So this is why, like just imagine, so in small quantity, usually except the exception for the for mayonnaise, small quantity that is disturbed in a container or a larger quantity. So how do we do it? First, we separate the cream from the milk. Cream is, so we separate it, so cream is still an oil in water emulsion, and then we go to a churning and cooling process. So how we do it? We first need to disturb the protein coat of the globule. So we kind of malax or shape uh, or centrifuge to disturb this coat. Then um, there is a cooling process that helps in the formation of fat crystals, but keeps the size smaller. So fat is now, we disturb it, and then there is a cooling down. There is a formation of fat crystal, or fat larger uh, uh, molecule, larger molecules, or larger globules, but they're still uh, smaller size. So, if they're smaller size and they're disturbed, then they're still oil in water. We need to make them water in oil emulsion. So this process, if we keep it with active agitation, we will uh, re move from oil in water to water in water. And then these crystals of fat, as they form together, there is a separation between the fat and the water or the other liquid or the water portion. And this is, this water portion, this is what we call the buffer milk. Buffer milk is still rich in fat because it has fat. It's, a, it's, a, it's a rich in, in, uh, in uh, proteins, milk protein. So the nutritional value is still higher in the buffer milk. And this is why, for example, the, there is, it's kind of an extra value and it is 
So in the industry, they're start trying to reuse it uh, uh, for other processing. They, they um, freeze dry it, they dry it, and then they make powder to be used for other applications. So uh, this is how it works. This kind of recapitulation. We have milk. We have a cream. Uh, we separate the cream. Then we come and we separate the cream. We have fat globules that are put together, and that is what we call bubble fat. This it goes to a specific uh, churning malaxation where the fat is put together, and then they keep the, the crystal of the fat. They keep progressing, and then there is a change of temperature. And then when these are put together, we either centrifuge, we filter, um, and we are able to separate the butter from the water. This is the water, the butter composition. Um, uh, so these two compounds, they are known, there are studies or there is an association, they're known for as atherogenic. So they affect, uh, they have been associated to um, uh, uh, cardiovascular problems and, and uh, cholesterol accumulation, etc. So this is why they are uh, uh, um, identified or named as or known as athletic. Then we have new olive oils, uh, olive oils, new oils. Um, same for the canola oil. Um, so there is a need of developing oils that are either um, uh, had lower, for example, uh, acid, acid, lower or uh, higher uh, uh, unsaturated or uh, versus uh, saturated or vice versa. Um, so, for example, here we have an example of uh, what we call high oleic soybean oil. Um, so the commercial composition is 14% of saturated fatty acid and 85% uh, of non-saturated. Then to be able to increase the level of unsaturated fatty acid especially the AC18, from 24% to 88%. Um, so what can be done for these soybeans? They are genetically modified. Same for the canola oil. They are genetically modified to elevate, so this is uh, by plant breeding, so to elevate, to increase the level of unsaturated fatty acid. Um, these are um, listed or accepted by Hal Canada as uh, oil, which they can be used. And then for people who work, uh, so I gave you the, the link, it's just uh, um, a link for the Hal um, government of Canada. So if people who are interested, you can go and see all the uh, oil they want. So normal oil, it depends. So what do we need? Usually these normal oils are just uh, in crypto, they have high level of unsaturated fatty acid uh, compared to the original or non uh, uh, ones, but uh, there are other options. So high ole canola oil. So as I said, canola oil during the beginning was genetically modified to reduce the erythic acid, but here, it's a new canola oil, it's a novel canola oil that is double genetically modified. It's just by breeding, plant breeding. It's not, it doesn't, so the, the gene, uh, so there's not uh, the new molecular intervention. Um, so, so, so here, instead of, in, in addition to erythric acid, there is an increase of unsaturated fatty. Uh, same is used at uh, Health Canada. Um, same for here, uh, 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 oleic oil. So they, most of them, uh, they focus on the oleic oil. Uh, 
few months ago, so we said margarine is a water in oil. So margarine, water in oil. It's like a butter. Water in a lot of oil. This when we're doing when I was a student, <laughs> we were learning, so this is how we were uh, how we, we were remember, how we had to remember water in oil, oil in water. I know it's a little bit tricky, but uh, it's like water in oil. Oil, if we say water in oil, usually the oil is larger. So we should put it this way. And the vice versa. Uh, we'll talk about this. So if we plug a vessel, we plug a vessel. So this is a list of ingredients of mercury, the vessel. Uh, it has canola oil, it has water. It has modifying pulp. Um, so, modifying pulp, it has the overall, it, has a, it is a mixture of saturated and unsaturated fat. And this is what has it, or give, gives it a specific uh, form or a specific value to the base of oil because, so they are kind of, they're mixing. So this is why, for example, when you, if you go, when you see bezel oil, in bezel margarine, bezel, uh, it says uh, for cardiovascular disease or something like that. I think there's a heart, etc. And this is why, so the reason why, because they are trying to mix in this one of um, saturated and unsaturated fat, so to have it, uh, kind of uh, um, has prolonging uh, oil or uh, spread, spread Then we have what we call fractionation. Uh, fractionation, so to do this, for example, we have to fractionate uh, the olive oil, uh, the pine oil, I should say, can I say olive oil? So fractionation will result, so fractionation is another way of changing or modifying the oils. Here the pile of oil. Um, so how we do it, so um, we change or we modify the temperature. We kind of expose them to different cycles of temperature and this Variation in temperature cycles will lead to um, change in the conformation of the oil of the pine oil. So this is why we um, we can are able to separate. You remember we said it last week. So we if we want to uh, change the change the conformation, or even for. For example, in the case of interesterification, we, we keep changing the temperature up and down so that we can remove specific uh, fatty acids from the mixture and these fatty acids that are the, the, the ones that we don't need, for example. Here, for example, if we want to keep monounsaturated fatty acids, so we play with the temperature and then we keep, we, uh, we, so then we can, we are able to remove the saturated fat. Um, I remember, I think Michael, uh, okay, I should have said it. Anyway, some of you asked me about enterocertification and how we do it, like in the three to one question. Uh, I will talk, give you real examples of enterocertification so you understand that we'll give you another example of fractionation, how we do the fractionation, so that it, it's easier to understand. Then we, uh, these and combustion, we can move to fully hydrogenated oil. So when we talk about fully hydrogenated oil, meaning saturated oil, and meaning these are in solid state, these are solid states. Um, oils that have, have high oils, High in olive fatty acid, uh, olive fat. These are sunflower, fully hydrogenated. So here we will have a conversion of all the monounsaturated fat to a saturated fat. This conversion, so going from from a saturated to unsaturated, this will 
in, th in this case, we are sure that we don't have trans fat. And then this specific modified or normal uh, uh, oil in hard oil, uh, they can be used in a blend uh, with oil for either frying or for food processing. Okay, we are done with this. So what is today's message? Today's message is that there are different ways, there are different saturated, polyunsaturated fats. These saturated, polyunsaturated, um, uh, they are coming from different sources and they have um, different ways of processing. So either easy way, for example, olive oil, olive oil easy processed, pressure, and then the leftover can be pressed uh, can be done with a solvent extraction. If the solvent extraction is done, it is not considered as an oil, as a portion of oil. Same for soybean. Soybean is one of the uh, very important because it's a source of protein. Oil, oil uh, extraction is more complex than olive oil. So if you remember, so cold extraction, then solvent extraction that needs more processing, and within this processing we will have byproduct that is lecithin, that is um, soil lecithin, that is we are, call, uh, we are calling uh, uh, survive. Then we have noble oils. These noble oils can be either genetically modified or from coming from the plant breeding, uh, canola, canola, highly saturated fatty acid, soybean, highly saturated fatty acid, and we have our other oil or other version of oil. They're called noble oils, they're not exactly. So these are oils that are used, for example, in frying that have a high, that is too high level of temperature. And then we have different ways of making this, this, these different fats or oils. So we either do with by fractionation. Fractionation within the tree, fractionation is like a kind of big cut. We remove fractions within the fatty acid, within the triglyceride. So the three, the three fatty acids, for example, we try to change the temperatures to focus in either the saturated fat or the unsaturated fat. And this is the way we have the same principle as the interestification. And we saw last week the interestification. So this is today's message. And I highly encourage you, you don't have to tell me this or the right. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to hear what you want to share. I suggest that every after every lecture, you can have, you name three things that you have learned, two things that you didn't learn, or you do do differently, or you still have, um, yeah, you do differently, and one thing that you haven't learned, and you don't know, or you haven't, and this one thing, you should tell me, because, so, we can, I am happy to me, one on one with every single student. I don't want. Just let me know. Just email me. Or we can have an online. Now it's easy to have an online meeting if you have any questions. So because this is, if you have an answered question, these unanswered questions will keep accumulating and then uh, until the exam. And sometimes it's kind of too late. So we are done with this. We we'll take a break and then we will go with. Either the tutorial or we go with the the other slides, the left one. Should we take uh, okay, so let's take a 15, 10, 15 minute break and then we can come back.
Yes, because it's almost... 